Who doesn't want to raise bison? Awesome animals. I'm going to tell you how to start raising bison. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. I got a special video for you today. This is going to be something I've been wanting to do for a while, and I did it a long time ago. Those of you who are interested in raising bison or interested in how we do things, if you're ever thinking about raising bison, or you maybe just want to jump in and just see how it goes, today I want to show you something. Today I want to show you the process of starting a bison herd. The reason I'm showing this video is because I get a lot of interest from a lot of people asking questions, wanting to visit and see how I do things. I'm into my third year of raising these awesome animals. So I'm still a beginner, but I can kind of tell you some things and I can hopefully help you get started or maybe even think about some of the steps that it takes to raising bison because it is a lot of work. Recent activity that I've been doing the past three years is getting started raising bison. And I wanna help you with that today. Number one thing that I always tell people to do is join the NBA. Join the National Bison Association. It's so important to start from there. With the National Bison Association, it gives you a whole avenue of resources. One is this handbook right here. You can get the bison handbook and this is the very first one that i got when i signed up you can become a member i think it's 225 dollars a year membership and it just is a whole avenue it gives you access to the nba conferences it gives you access to resources online it gives you the classifieds if you are interested in buying animals you can Look for animals people sell on bison. It also plugs you into every producer in North America that's part of the NBA. It gives you access to contact information to all the current NBA producers. Second thing to do is go visit a ranch. Go talk to some bison owners. Talk to the people that have been doing it a long time. You can talk to people like me that just started. There's different ranges in um, bison producers out there in North America that have totally done it differently. They started when they're younger, they started when they're older, it doesn't matter. Go visit a bison ranch. The third thing, do as much research as you can. Do as much research as possible. And part of that research is, there's a lot of resources online, but also starts with the MBA and then also asking producers. Do your study, do your homework to get ready for these animals and see what you have to do. Hopefully this video helps you also get to that. The next thing to do, reach out to your state organization or your state association. I'm part of the Oklahoma Bison Association and there's a lot of states that have their own organizations. Get apart, get with some people that are in your community or in your state Find that group of people, get in with them, and they can help you get started as well. Another thing, when you're starting, it's expensive. It's an investment in these animals. A couple of resources that you can use. Use the USDA and also use the NRCS. Those government organizations have great programs for beginner ranchers. You can get a lot of help financially. You can get a lot of help through your land. Sign up for programs that will help you establish water systems. They have programs to help you build fence. They have loan options to buy land. Use the USDA and use the NRCS. One of the questions that I always get is how much or how many bison can you put on so many acres? What we call a stocking rate. Well, how do you figure out a stocking rate? You can kind of have a general idea, but guys, the first thing is all about where you're located. Wherever you're located will tell you how much grass is there, what exists there, and what type of grasses are available, and how much grass is available for bison to graze. Because yes, we want those bison grazing just like they have for hundreds of years. 
the NRCS, they'll have a field agent. They can come out, they can look at your land, they can analyze it, they can study it, and they can tell you mathematically and all their scientific, their research and their, their work that they put into it, they can tell you your stocking rate and they can tell you how many bison you can have on your land. One of the benefits about raising these bison is they are low maintenance. You are gonna have to work your animals. You gotta pay attention to them. Watch their body language, read them, make sure their health is good. You really gotta check on these animals. They are low maintenance compared to cattle. They can take care of themselves. As long as they have good water and they're fed, they got good grass or hay, whatever you're doing, they'll respect you and they'll understand that. Which leads me to my next point. Another question that I always get, and I think it's really important, maybe one, one or two of the most popular questions is, fencing, what do you do for fencing? What do I need to do to keep the bison in? Well, it's really about personal preference. One of the things that we do, barbed wire. Here on an exterior fence, we've got five strands of barbed wire. It's one of the first ones that we built here on the property. Then we started doing six wire fence on the exterior. Six wire fence or six strands of barbed wire with, you can do six and a half or seven foot tall T-post and it does great. But one of the things people ask me, when you got bulls or, you, or they fight or they try to get out, we keep our bulls separated. That's one thing, that'll save your fence. The other thing is we keep these animals happy. Like Dunbar here, he's gentle, he's nice. I still have to pay attention and be careful with him. He's a nice bull. We spend a lot of time around him. And that's why he's like this. But we keep these animals happy. How many do I start with? I started with Eleanor here. I started with five yearlings. I got one bull and four female yearlings. I lost one early. Within my first year, I lost my first animal. I was in a trailer. I was moving them back and forth to the vet. Doc Parsons in Stratford, Oklahoma. Got her vaccinations. I was bringing her back home and she had been gored right into her lungs. That was the loss of my first heifer my first year. Not a great experience, but that's part of it. It's not what you want, but it's all a learning curve. So what we did is after I lost that heifer in the trailer, moving them back and forth to the vet to get their spring vaccinations, my wife and I decided we're gonna invest in a handling system. And so that's what we did. We invested in a handling system, put a lot of work into it, creating a tub and doing some pipe work and some fencing to create our own handling system here on our ranch. That's something you're gonna to have to think about. You can't just let these animals out in the pasture when you get home. If you wanna be successful and you wanna do the right thing, you've gotta work your animals. Up in the north, they have to work them mostly once, sometimes twice a year. In the south, where we are, like in Oklahoma or Texas, we've gotta work our animals at least two times a year, sometimes three. And that's because of the parasites that exist here, because of the climate, your environment, weather, all those things that go into consideration. That all depends on where you're located, what you're gonna deal with. But you be prepared and ready to work your bison. Find a good vet. Have a vet relatively close to you because you're gonna get sick animals, you're gonna have questions, you're gonna need to work them, and you're gonna need somebody that knows a little bit about these guys. Also, when you purchase your very first animals, be ready to have them in a corral system. You have to have a home base for these animals. When you bring them home, it's a new environment to them. Like when we brought Big Joe home, he had been in a completely different area. We had to put Big Joe and the two ladies in this heavy duty pipe fence. And what we started using, what you call continuous panels. This is a continuous panel that come in 20 foot sections, six bar. What we did is we set two and three eighths pipe every 10 feet and it's solid and it can handle big bison like Big Joe. Also, the great thing about these working panels is we can work the bison in here 
we can push them and they may bounce off these a little bit but they won't tear something like a fence down you can't work your bison around something like this you can't push them with your atv or do all that stuff have a home base for them where you've got water good fresh clean water you can also feed your animals in this area when you come home it lets them know hey i've got you i'm gonna take care of you this is your new home introduce them to a good place make them feel happy all that good stuff let them know they're going to be taken care of before you just let them out in the pasture and let them take off because you may not catch them and they may run through your fence <laughs> when buying your animals really look at something what we call confirmation know what you're going in for know what you're looking at make sure you're buying good animals okay, you want to if you're starting a herd and make sure you're starting off with good animals i started off with what i felt like good animals i was diverse i bought from a really good producer a well-known producer and i trusted him and then i also bought from other places too i love getting animals from different areas but one of the things you need to consider is where you buy your animals from depending on if it's a national park or a large ranch how wild are your animals be ready to when you bring them home to put them in a pen like this because they may be kind of wild they may be a little bit crazy if you buy them from big places where they don't see people that often a lot of producers spend time with their bison like you see on my videos i spend a lot of time around our bison and that's why they're calm and they get used to us the only time they're not calm is when they get riled up and they all get energy and want to run around or you get in the pen with them and you try to work them go back and watch some of my videos when you corner a bison and you pin them up what do they do guys also you may watch some of my videos and if you haven't i get up close and i get up personal to a couple of my bison i don't do that with big joe that often because i don't really quite trust him also he's about 2,000 pounds you got to be careful even though mine are calm you may see some of mine in my videos they spend a lot of time around me my stepdad kevin and so they get used to us and we do that so that we can easily handle these animals low stress and then we work them it's also a low stress situation and we want them to stay as calm as possible when we work them twice a year also you can't just buy one bison when you're thinking about going to purchase your bison you can't just buy one guys these are very social animals you see their unique character every single bison has its own personality and its own character which that's part of why i love these animals but you can't just buy one these are these animals have to be around each other they're a family and they have to be close with each other don't ever pin a bison up by itself and if you do it'll stress out make sure if you're going to purchase bison always at least get two they've got to have a companion they've got to have a buddy that's just the way these animals are hey guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope i've helped you out a little bit if you got any questions you can always email me reach out to me and contact me guys number one sign up for the nba get a part of the national bison association be a member there's a lot of good resources and a lot of good people. And that's another great thing is they have offer two conferences, one in the winter and then one in the summer. I've been to both and they're both great conferences. The people there do a great job. And the great thing about the Bison Association is the people. When you go to these associations, it's all one big family. We're all a part of one thing and that's raising these awesome animals. We all have the same thing in mind. We may do things different and we may raise them different ways, but we all have one thing in mind and that goal is to grow the numbers. Bison 1 million, that's the goal. We're about, we're close to about 600,000 bison in North America right now and we just wanna keep those numbers growing. I also wanna let you know I'm doing something different this time. I'm going to the Missouri Bison Cell March 20th, my wife and I and baby Brooks we're gonna to go to the bison sale at Missouri. Never been to this one before, but what I'm gonna do is I may buy some bison. We'll see, keep you updated on that. But I'm gonna follow a guy by the name of Noah Gibson around, part of Broken Arrow Bison. He's located in Kansas. He has raised bison before, and what I'm gonna do is my wife and I, we are going to actually film the whole process 
And what we're going to do is follow him along on his journey of starting a herd. He's building this fence right now. He's been working hard on that, updating a lot of stuff. But he's going to go back into it with his family. He's raised bison. It's been about seven years. And he's raising bison again, which is awesome. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to bring you along with me to be a part of that journey. And it may just give you an idea, along with this video, of what it takes to purchase bison and start your own herd. And maybe Noah and I can help you do that. So follow us along. Stay tuned for one of my upcoming videos of following Noah and his family, purchasing and starting his own herd. Thank you guys for watching Cross Timbers Bison. Thank you for following. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button, guys. Go sign up for the NBA right now. Reach out to your local state association if they have one and reach out to me if you need anything, guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm.